In round 15, 2010, Lewis Jetta kicked his first career goal in his 15th game. You may have thought he wasn't able to get his chance because he was playing in the back line. However, you would be mistaken as Jetta would actually miss the first 19 shots at goal in his career, the most in AFL history. Jetta would find redemption two years later where he would lead the Swans with 45 goals and a premiership. However, that does not live up to the lowest score scored by a team at zero goals and one behind, achieved by St Kilda in round 17, 1899, where they lost to Geelong, who scored 23-24, 162. This game also contributed to the first game of 10 or more goals by a single player, which was achieved by Joe McShane, who kicked 11 on that day. St Kilda have had a number of embarrassing records. For a team to have won only a single premiership over 100 years in existence, they have had much unwanted success on the other side of the ladder, having been awarded a record 27 wooden spoons for finishing last in the AFL. St Kilda had a pretty good head start to this, being bottom of the ladder in the first six seasons, only recording two wins in those six seasons. They would eventually see some success, but not with many dark times. North Melbourne is the next closest with 15 wooden spoons. Sticking to the theme of St Kilda and losing, a team being unsuccessful can be embarrassing to say the least, but at least you have your mates to do it with you. However, potentially one of the most forgettable and embarrassing careers has to go to Ted Hall, who was a midfielder playing for the Saints between 1897 and 1902. Over his sixth season career, Ted played 73 games. He holds the abysmal record of the most games played before registering a single win, being 62 games. And on his 63rd game, in his fifth season in round 12 of the 1901 season, he would achieve his first win in a game of football against Carlton. He would go on to play 10 more games games in his career, not registering another win, finishing his career with a winning percentage of just 1.37%, a record I don't believe will ever be broken again. Winning just one game in your career is dreadful, but how about never winning one in your whole career? I'm sure there are many players who have played in the AFL or VFL who did not register a win in their career and experienced a handful of losses before they were delisted or had to end their career early. Well, can you imagine the record for the most ever losses without a win? The record for the most ever losses without a win in their whole career goes to a man by the name of Lester Kelly. Kelly played for the team University over three seasons between 1912 and 1914. After 40 games, Kelly would go on to retire, having the record for the longest career without registering a single win. 40 losses could drive anyone to cut their career short. That isn't the case for Cade Simpson. Simpson was a backman for the Carlton Football Club. He played for the Blues between 2003 and 2020, winning best and fairest for the club in 2013. He retired in 2020 after playing 342 games and kicking 138 goals. He once held the active record for most consecutive games played with 158, but that is not much of an embarrassing record. Rather, throughout his 342 games, Simpson holds the all-time record for most losses in a career with 215. Simpson came to Carlton in 2003 where the Blues had recently faced sanctions for exceeding the salary cap. As a result, the team had lost its top picks and with a lot of the old legends of the 80s and 90s retiring, the Blues were in a rebuilding period. However, without much success, Simpson was part of much of those times and experienced much loss. Simpson did, however, experience some finals in his career and was recognized as a great and loyal player. Some players are unfortunate to not ever play any finals and that was true for Trevor Barker. Barker played for St Kilda between 1975 and 1989. One of the high-flying players of the 70s and 80s, Barker was loyal to St Kilda even through its darkest times, refusing enticing offers from rival clubs to jump ship. He decided to stay at the club he supported as a child and ended up a legend of the club, captaining the side from 1983 to 1986, winning two best and fairest awards as well as being inducted posthumously in the St Kilda Hall of Fame in 2003 and later the AFL Hall of Fame in 2019. The St Kilda Best and Fairest Award is also named after him. However, over 230 games, Barker holds the unfortunate record for the most games played without appearing in the finals. AFL brings all sorts of personalities to the game and throughout history we have seen many rough players who aren't afraid to throw hands now and then. When you think of players who tend to face suspension often you would think of Barry Hall or Toby Green. Another that pops into mind is Stephen Baker who played 203 games for the Saints between 1999 and 2011. In 2010 round 13 against Geelong Baker was given the 
duties to tag Steve Johnson. Throughout the game, Baker had struck Johnson three times and made unreasonable contact with him while he was injured. This led to him receiving a total of a nine-week match ban, which is the longest given from a single match under the points tribunal system. There have definitely been players who have received life bans over other instances, but speaking purely from a single match under the current system, this is the longest. While playing for Sorrento Football Club in the Mornington Peninsula Football League, in 2013, Baker was suspended for six weeks for unduly rough conduct against an opponent in the preseason. This sanction took his total career suspensions beyond the threshold to be automatically deregistered from playing football for life, ending his playing career at all levels. But Baker successfully appealed the six-week suspension, enabling him to continue playing. Suspensions can cost you and your team your services, but giving away free kicks costs you in the game. And the record for frees given away goes to none other than Melbourne's newest recruit, Brody Grundy. In the 2014 Anzac Day Clash, Grundy registered 25 hitouts and 12 disposals. The Pies had an abysmal start, being down 40 to 4 halfway through the second quarter. However, the Pies managed to come back to win 83 to 60 on the heroics of Dane Swan, who racked up 26 disposals and four goals. However, Grundy would go on to beat the AFL record for frees given away at eight, which was five more than anyone else on the ground. Brody Grundy is a great player, we would all agree, but what's worse than one great player with an embarrassing record would be three great players with abysmal records. And not just any great players, but three Brownlow medalists. AFL players pride themselves on their ability to be accurate with their ball possessions, but some games don't go their way. Brownlow medalist Mark Rusciuto holds the record for most clanger or turnover handballs in a game, with six. While fellow Brownlow medalist Gary Ablett Jr. holds the record for the most clanger kicks at eight. But the most clanger possessions goes to none other than two-time Brownlow medalist Nat Fife at 13 in one game. He is in good company, holding that record with Heath Shaw and Adam McPhee. But the worst record of all in this video, I believe, goes to another Brownlow medalist by the name of Adam Cooney, who in round 19, 2015, racked up 20 possessions with five of those kicks being out of bounds on the full, being the most any player has individually kicked out of the full.